what it, what it was? I heard her say, I know. Um, and I knew then that there was something wrong. And uh, when I came to the door and I seen um, three gentlemen dressed in army uniform, I knew... <laughs> I knew, what the, I knew what the news was going to be. The time after, basically, when we found out that Cameron had been killed, well, it was basically the start of a, um, you know, a snowball. Every ceremony that you have is a constant reminder of what's happened. And the hardest ceremony for us was when Cameron arrived home at Richmond Air Base. That's kind of when it became real, when you see the box coming off of the plane and his friends are carrying him inside. And, uh, and that was just uh, horrendous. Very difficult time. That was, this is the way Cameron is, this is he's gone. For the most conspicuous acts of valour, extreme devotion to duty and ultimate self-sacrifice at Gorjack Village, the day after Cam was killed, his team members approached me and said, oh, we, we, need, to, we need to have a chat about um, Cam's actions yesterday. And I knew from exactly what they were telling me that this had to go somewhere. For a third time, Corporate Baird selflessly drew enemy fire away from his team and assaulted the doorway. And to write up a VC citation for an Australian soldier... Uh, without a doubt, um, is one of the most humbling experiences that I'll experience in my lifetime and one of the pinnacles of uh, my military career. This, this one from, from Heath, another, another school friend. I was very sad and upset to hear of Cameron's passing. He was and always will be one of the good guys and one of the most genuine and fair blokes I have ever met. I won't forget him. We were just trying to get our lives back together again when we received a few months down the track a phone call from the Chief of Army saying that he wanted to meet with us. And he came out and he said that the decision had been made, that the Queen had signed off and that Cameron was going to be presented with a Victoria Cross. We were just overwhelmed, uh, felt ecstatic because... We thought this is a, um, a great honour. So we had to actually fly straight down to Canberra, but we weren't to say a word to anyone. It was totally a secret. We'll just break out of there because the Prime Minister has just stepped up in Federal Parliament. Uh, to solemnly inform the House, in the presence of family and our military chiefs, that the 100th Victoria Cross has been awarded to an Australian. We were up training and our sergeant has come in and said, everyone down at the TV now. Uh, this award is to the late Corporal Cameron Baird. The noise that we made when we saw the announcement up there was... Uh, the, <laughs> it's a concrete building, but I'm pretty sure it shook. It was, it was a really big moment to find out that he'd been awarded a VC because there was no-one more deserved, I don't think. Your Excellency, to be posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross for Australia... Corporal Cameron Baird. I think it's a very important thing for us to know the stories of our Victoria Cross winners. With complete disregard for his own safety, Corporal Baird charged towards the enemy positions. The Victoria Cross is an extraordinarily special decoration and the process is a very rigorous one. It's our uh, most eminent award for bravery in uh, wartime. You are wrapped in the care and love of Australians across our country. I remember every minute of that occasion and the great sense of honour and deep privilege that I felt in holding that Victoria Cross and putting it in the hands of his parents. This uh, precious symbol of the finest human values of courage to have Cameron's team at the back and, and his comrades there from um, to commando was um, was very fitting and I'm so glad that they're all there. We've seen the VC as something that it's equally shared amongst all the boys in second commando and we wanted to make sure that they knew we were sharing the moment with them. 
when we looked down there and did what we did to Kay and myself, give them a wave, we were acknowledged and it was just a simple thumbs up. That's all that mattered. For Doug and Kay to be so kind in their moment to uh, be so selfless and share it with us was, was, was very nice and was profound and certainly something that uh, we'll, we'll reflect upon in the years to come. As a family, I think we're, we're doing OK. We're probably in a much better place than what we were a few months ago. We feel for the other families, those other soldiers... And not only the ones who have been killed, but the injured ones. Oh, I do wonder, you know, what will happen when all the, all the troops come out? Will it go back to the way it was? Will it, was it all for nothing? I would like to think that it's not all for nothing uh, because of the, the, the 40 that have, have been killed over there. But he died doing what he loved and he wouldn't have been happy doing anything else. I kind of worry sometimes that so much of the experience of Afghanistan is being carried by a small cohort. And, you know, in a sense, it's, it's always been the gift of the veteran to us that they insulate us from uh, that experience. But uh, we really ought to know about what they do. Yeah, I, I have my days where it's hard. I don't think it's necessarily bad to talk about it because I saw so much bravery and sacrifice and so much good work done that day. Life in the regiment without Cameron is different. He has left a void. But frankly, Cameron lives on through each of us. I think he's grown a couple of inches, inches since he died. The guys still look up to him and they strive to be half the man that Cameron was. So in many ways, the legend, the legacy of Cameron certainly lives on. It just goes to show that not everyone that lives or dies for our freedom is in the United States. Quite often I hear, as I've said before, people that seem to think that we don't need our allies, but the honest to God truth is, is they fight the same team that we do. They live and die for what we do. And every time I hear a story like that, I guess I lose a piece of myself. Or maybe I gain a new piece of myself in a different angle. I'm not quite sure which. <coughs> uh, as you all know, my grandfather was a third Marine in World War II in Guam, Guadalcanal, and Pele Lu, and I know the stories he told me of Australia, and I believe in their people, 100%, because there are people. All of our allies are our people. We have to continue looking forward and realize that we're the same team. Yeah, we give each other shit all the time. It's going to happen. Hell, our own damn military gives each other shit. You hear the Navy and the Marines argue with each other, or the Air Force, or the Army. We do it. That's how it is. You hear the Australians call us Yanks. You hear the British call us Cowboys. Um, well, they used to back in the day. I don't know what they use now. I have no clue what the Frenchmen call us. Uh, but the point is, when hell comes or high water, do you really think that matters to them? They're going to do their job. And that job is to keep us alive, America. Same team, regardless. They deserve your love just as much as the people that are here in the United States fighting. Because they fight 5,000 miles away, 4,000 miles away, 2,000 miles away in a different country. It, they're, they're still our front lines for defense. Love them. Cherish them. Help them. Do all you can to support them. That's my closing for the night. Ladies and gentlemen, push forward all you can. Make one more phone call. Love one more person. Say thank you to one more veteran. And tell them how much it means to them. 
that are in your family that are free and you for what they've done. In closing tonight, for those of you who are veterans and that are listening, my Thanksgiving is a little different than every American, and I wish they all were the same as me. When Thanksgiving comes, the thing that I'm thankful for is the people that fight for our country and fight for our freedom. I pray that all of you come home safely every night and every day. When I close my eyes at the dinner table and pray, that's what I pray about, is all of you that have given me what I've got and continue to. I love you all with all my heart, and I'll continue to do all I can for you. Damn, this shit gets to me. Pardon me. I will continue to do all I can for you because that's the right thing. <clears throat> when Christmas comes, it's not just about Jesus and God. It's about the people that Jesus and God sent to keep us free. There's more than one thing to pray for, people. Stop praying for yourselves and pray for others. You'd find that it's a less arrogant world if you put your heart into it more often. Meanwhile, that's enough for me tonight. God bless you all. Birch out.